So it's my pleasure to introduce uh, Karina Rex, uh, who's the director of the Department of Mobility and Infrastructure in the city of Pittsburgh. Uh, uh, so the mission of the department that she leads, the Department of Mobility and Infrastructure, uh, has the mission to provide the physical mobility necessary for the economic mobility of all Pittsburghers. Uh, in her role, Karina is responsible for providing safe, accessible, sustainable, and efficient transportation options and facilities in the city. She previously served as the Director of Transportation Planning for the District of Columbia and the founding principal of the Mid-Atlantic Office of the Innovative Transportation Consultancy, Nelson Nygaard Associates, leading the firm's multimodal practice on the East Coast, working with cities and communities across the nation and globe on integrated, implementable mobility solutions that serve local values and aspirations. She was hired by Mayor Bill Peruto in 2017. Now, please welcome Karina. Yeah, no, thank you. I uh, was joking with Mayor Peduto um, yesterday that when I interviewed for this job about a year ago, um, he didn't mention uh, mine blowouts and landslides as part of the um, things that I'd have to deal with here. But I'm happy to be here and uh, learning a lot every day. Um, so I am pleased to be here in, in representing the administration of, of Mayor Peduto. Um, and it has been just about a year. This, this week marks my, my one year uh, anniversary of being here um, in the city relocating um, from Washington, D.C. And I have to say that one of the things that has made um, this experience so rewarding and so special is the partnership that we have um, with not only Carnegie Mellon University, but also the University of Pittsburgh and, and any number of the institutions um, here across the city. It is really a rare gift to have such, such highly skilled, world-class institutions that um, are, are as committed to making the city that they live in a better place as they are to really pushing the bounds of human understanding and sort of academic uh, exercises and research. And so it really is a, something that is special um, that we are fortunate to have and grateful for inst uh, initiatives like this uh, Metro 21 Institute um, that's being created. We have had a partnership in place with CMU since 2014. Um, and that allows us to really use uh, CMU as an arm of the city, that we can come to them um, with questions, with challenges, um, to help us address some of those critical issues. I reached out to um, the Department of, of Engineering just recently uh, at the charge of the mayor, who said, I need an asphalt that doesn't create potholes. And I said, I'm going to call CMU <laughs> to come up with an asphalt that won't have potholes in it. Um, so I'm waiting for that research. Um, come on, thank you. Um, but we can bring our challenges and visions to this institution. Um, and thanks to this, we really are um, world leaders in things like uh, applications of autonomous technology. We're seeing it on our streets today. We're seeing how that's applying uh, and how it can be used in creating that physical mobility to achieve economic mobility that we talk about. We see um, the great uh, adaptive traffic signals that were first demonstrated here in our city and are now um, in cities throughout the country. Um, using that technology that was developed here, pushing it um, even further. We're in continued partnership um, with things like using video uh, analytics for Vision Zero, for safety, um, to do sort of predictive interventions uh, before, so, so experiencing and observing those near misses, the things that we don't even have data on typically, um, but we can partner with CMU um, to use this kind of information to uh, see what is typically not reported and put interventions in place before something happens. So um, really important that we do that. Um, but we also know that Smart Cities and, and the Smart City Institute is an uh, entity that uh, also is one that listens and observes and understands what the real world challenges are of the city. It's not just an academic exercise. Um, we live in the real world. I have slopes that, that, that slide down and put 20,000 cubic yards of soil on, on the roads and needing to figure that out, needing to really challenge how can we get ahead of that? How can we monitor? How can we um, see what is happening, those, those incremental movements in the slope um, before something really catastrophic happens. Um, reaching out to this institution, finding uh, out how we can use that, understanding how global climate change 
uh, affects things like landslides. I didn't know, actually, that the landslides are a consequence of some of the global climate change that we've experienced. Um, so how do we understand what those connections are? Um, I have feeling bridges and railings and stairs um, here in the real world. Um, and, and working with this institution, working through the engineering, working through, through materials testing and other kinds of applications to see, you know, can we do things, crazy things like 3D print bridges or use coatings to, to restore um, stairs. So we are the test bed. We're happy to be the test bed um, for this institution. We are, uh, as, as I think has been said before, we're the double black diamond of cities, right? If you can do it here, you can do it any place across the globe. Um, so we're happy for this partnership. We're happy um, to be that place, to be the real world that you can test these ideas in. We need the knowledge that this institution and that this institute brings. Um, we're in an era of big data. We're about to get heaps of it and have no capacity really to understand that. So to partner with this institution, to partner with all of you in this room, to help us understand what's happening, to help us intervene uh, in ways that really serve the underlying values of our city, um, and, and contribute to the success of our city uh, residents. So happy to be here, happy to represent the mayor, looking forward to the next year and what will happen and fewer landslides if we can do that. So thank you.